Uh, I think about automation, I think about scalability, and I think about uh, dynamism. Most of the countries that have access problems, uh, you have a combination of either really poor road infrastructure, or you have areas that have roads that are not year-round. And so there's uh, weather, extreme weather, that makes the place uh, temporarily inaccessible. And even in good days, it could be hours and hours to get there. With drones, the average delivery time is 15 minutes. So we take an area that could have taken days to get to by foot uh, in the past, and we've now reduced that period amount of time to only about 15 minutes. By having the drones completely autonomous, where they're flying themselves and they're speaking to each other and they're coordinating with each other, uh, and when there are extreme weather conditions, each of them has the ability to adjust to that and to communicate in real time across the entire network in a way that humans would never be able to do quickly enough to make it safe. So once you use artificial intelligence to make the drones fly, you can use them for all kinds of things. Today we use it to m deliver blood, medicine, vaccines, but tomorrow those same exact drone systems can be used uh, to video World Heritage sites as you're trying to identify changes over time um, or to try to monitor um, population movements or agricultural developments. So as UNESCO thinks about uh, the World Heritage Sites, some of which are located in conflict zones, which might not be as accessible, uh, it's extremely affordable and efficient to send a drone to those areas from time to time to be able to give you a sense of what's happening on the ground, what, what changes there might be happening over time as a result of the conflict without putting anyone in danger to go and check themselves.